Gonna find my baby, gonna hold her tight, gonna grab some afternoon delight. You are watching TFI. Greetings, welcome back to another video featuring the low budget, high performance $650 workstation Slayer PC, which is being put up against that. Almost a money no object, best that you can buy PC as it stands today and um, we're doing this because this has just come into my possession and i thought why not why not see how my low budget pc compares against something like that now this has been built for a vr event an exhibition that i'm going to next month it was specced to run vr at the best possible performance that you can buy today without spending sort of five figures so that's kind of how that's came about i thought whilst i've got it Let's put it up against the cheap workstation Slayer, just in case anyone's still on the fence with that cheaper PC. You can see how far off it is from one of the best systems that you can buy today. So I'll just quickly run over the specs of this thing here, just so you know what's in there. The CPU is the Intel i9-9900K, which is 8 cores, 16 threads, boosting up to 5 gigahertz with MCE enabled because it's sat underneath the NZXT Kraken X62 360 millimeters all-in-one liquid cooler, one of the best that you can buy today. The motherboard is the Asus Z390 ROG Maximus 11 formula, and I've never really been a fan of motherboards, mate, but that thing was absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. What, an, what a what a looker. What a looker, mate. Uh, for RAM, we've got the Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB 64 gig kit which is CL16 3200 MHz RAM, and it looks absolutely spectacular. You can see it's sort of just dripping away there in the background. Stunning RAM, absolutely beautiful visual effects. For storage, I've got two storage solutions in that box because I wasn't sure whether the two graphics cards were gonna take up all the 16 PCI Express lanes on the CPU. So I've got, as a primary drive, the Samsung 970 EVO M.2 PCI Express NVMe solid state drive, the one terabyte variation. And then as a secondary drive, which was a backup in case the first one didn't work, is the Samsung 860 EVO one terabyte SATA based solid state drive. The case is the NZXT H700i, the black blue edition, beautiful case, massive, airy, nice to build in, looks good, all metal, tempered glass, cracking case. Uh, the power supply is Corsair RM1000i, 1000, 1000 watt power supply, fully modular. And then for graphics cards, mate, ace up the sleeves, two NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti's in SLI over an NVLink bridge. It's a beauty, mate. It's a beauty. So we're going to put that up against the $650 little modest workstation Slayer PC to see how far off it is in my suite of benchmark tests. So the tests that I'm going to be running, we've got the Autodesk Inventor bench test, we've got the Autodesk Inventor certification test, Fusion 360 certification test, Revit certification test, time how long they take to do, and then we've got a suite of standard benchmark rendering tests, the likes of Corona, Blender, Theo, Indigo. We'll put them side by side to see how far off that cheap workstation is from an almost money no object best of the best build and let's see how it did thank you very much for waiting this long
by the turbulence of its magnificence, Christ, on a pedal bike. That is one gorgeous computer, but how did it perform? What do the tests mean? Right, well, the there was no surprises really across the majority of the tests. The Inventor benchmark score at the beginning, 12.29 for Workstation Slayer, 13.65 for Money No Object PC. That's quite telling. And what it tells me is that the Money No Object PC is extreme overkill for the likes of Autodesk Inventor, Fusion 360, even extending into the likes of Autodesk Revit as well. The Money No Object PC pulling a 13.65. The difference between that and 12.29 it's not massive sometimes within regular fluctuation of normal tests so uh, that's saying a lot for the workstation slayer and how well it performs previously we've never seen anything other than high-end workstations and extreme enthusiast builds reaching 12 plus in that test so that's that's great for both systems but shows that the money no object pc is extreme overkill uh, the rest of the tests which were mostly rendering workloads were, there was no surprise there really uh, the cinebench single threaded score shows that the, the Ryzen 3000 CPUs are incredible for single threaded performance, which is what our applications really care about. The majority of Autodesk's 3D CAD applications are single threaded, so that suits the, the Ryzen 3000 series of CPUs down at the ground and it's shown in those tests. But the rest of the rendering workloads, absolutely no surprises really. Unfortunately, it's not really a fair test to put the Money No Object build up against the, the Workstation Slayer for a lot of those rendering workloads, but it's quite interesting to see. Uh, the GPU tests were the ones that were the most unfair. Obviously, the Money No Object system having two 2080 Ti's and SLI, just it, it just stormed ahead in all of the GPU workloads, which is which is expected. You know, you wouldn't put an RX 580 into a build that you plan on doing GPU rendering with. You just wouldn't do that. But the CPU rendering workloads, even though the Money No Object PC won those. The Ryzen 5 system, it was behind, but for $650 worth of PC, you are getting so much performance out of a $650 PC and a $200 processor. Those were some impressive scores. And you have to remind yourself that we're not working on a $2,000 PC here. It's $650. That was brilliant. There's almost nothing else that I can think of off the top of my head that would perform at that level at that price point. So for CPU rendering workloads, if you are on a low budget and you need something that is going to be cheap, but it's still going to get the job done in a reasonable amount of time, that's not a bad build, mate. Across all of those rendering tests, all of the CPU tests, it performed admirably. It would be unfair to say that it was keeping up or it was a close second, but it's still an admirable amount of performance for that price point. And I don't think you'd be disappointed with that kind of performance for that price point, just to tie you over until you maybe do have the kind of capital to spend on a system like the Money No Object build or something else that might be coming in the future later down the line. All right, then I think I'm gonna knock it on the head there. That's all I've got. I think I'm probably gonna get criticized for comparing these two systems because they are very much chalk and cheese, but the entire purpose of this video was just, well, twofold really. It was to show you what kind of performance you will get out of that Money No Object system if you do plan on comparing this to other systems you've seen other people benchmark in those tests. But also, if you're thinking about buying the Workstation Slayer build and you're slightly concerned that you're buying a bit of a lemon and it's going to be too far behind because of the price point, the whole point of this really was to show you it's actually not that far behind one of the best systems that money can buy today, within reason. I mean, you know, it's still a consumer level build. All right, so in conclusion, both of these PCs are delicious in their own special ways. Workstation Slayer is outstanding performance for the price point with Money No Object being absolutely beautiful and insanely powerful, uh, but also expensive. But it'll get the jo any job, pretty much any job done, if I'm honest, like it's insane. Uh, so parts lists for both of these systems will be linked in the description, along with uh, Amazon links to both Amazon UK and Amazon US. That's my affiliate links. So if you do decide you want to put together one of these systems or buy any of the parts out of these systems and you use my Amazon links, I will get a small little kickback from Amazon, which doesn't cost you anything, but it just gets me a little nudge back, which helps the channel continue to operate. Thank you very much. That is indeed all I've got, and I'll see you in the next one. Toodle.